good and this is my Warframe Beginner's Guide to the Galaxy. This is episode 4 and today we are going to be working our way through to our next junction. That is the Mercury Junction on the other side of Venus. Now I did tell you guys I was going to be doing a little bit of stuff off camera. Mostly what I did off camera was work my way down here to Romula which is our first sort of accessible Dark Sector mission. I do want to talk about that real quick before we dive into the junction. Dark Sector missions, as you can see when I mouse over this, have a 10% resource drop rate increase. And I mean, the bonuses are different on different ones, but for this one, it's 10% resource drop rate increase, 10% affinity from kills, 5% affinity from rifle kills. As we know, affinity are, is the way that we rank up our frames and our weapons, and also how we increase our mastery rank. So as a new player, if you're looking for somewhere to go where you can just work on raising those ranks, I highly recommend Romula. There is another Dark Sector mission up here at Malva. The reason that we haven't unlocked that one yet was because I wanted to save all of the missions that are required for the Mercury Junction for this video so you guys can see how to do them. They all should be fairly simple to be honest, but that's neither here nor there. We're going to dive into that. Before we do though, I do want to take a quick look at some of the mods that I have acquired by doing that grind. So it wasn't very long either. I did maybe, I want to say like an hour and a half, maybe of doing missions there, and now we have some fun things like Stormbringer, well, I guess we already got Stormbringer, but we did pick up Serration, which is plus 15% damage to any rifle. Bows technically can equip this as well. Most primary weapons can. Pretty much everything except for shotguns can. Uh, rifle mods generally work for everything but shotguns, and Serration is sort of the default damage mod that you're going to be putting on primary weapons for most of the game, so picking that up, that's a big one to look out for. We did have a flawed Serration here that we have no need for now. You'll notice that I didn't really rank it up, and that's because early on in the game, you're almost better off just kind of stacking mods. So we have another four mod capacity left on our bow here. We could go for additional magazine capacity, but I think... Actually, yeah, let's do that. So the reason I'm doing this and I'm not actually raising Serration right now is because I want to leave my Serration at 4 until my mastery rank gets higher than 4. And the reason for that is that every time I level up a new primary weapon, I want to be able to start by putting Serration on it. Serration is the number one mod I want to put on a new weapon to make it a little bit more effective when I am ranking it up so it's not as hard to rank it up. Now in the pistol slot, we did acquire a Hornet Strike, an unflawed one. That is the base damage mod for pistols. So now we're doing good on that. We also got a Pistol Gambit, which is the base critical mod for pistols. So we're kind of heading down the right path here. We do have a few more capacity here, so we could go with a flawed heated charge. I think that's actually a good idea. Heat damage will basically work on, on peeling back armor a little bit. Uh, it does kind of burn enemies when you get a proc of it. That being said, our status chance is like 6%, so we're probably not going to get that many procs. It does still add a little bit of extra damage, though, which is nice. So we'll go with that. And then for our Skana, I can't remember what we picked up here. I think I got pressure points here. I think I actually picked up double pressure points, but I can't say for sure. Uh, we do have North Wind, which I believe we got from the junction. Uh, we have some Reach now, which is great. That'll extend the range of our melee attacks. And then we have the option of Parry, which increases the counter chance, which is our ability to deflect those bullets when we have our melee weapon out. Or we have Fury, which increases our attack speed. I think I'd rather go with Fury, but we don't have the capacity, so we'll go Parry for right now. So that's kind of it for our mod updates. I don't think I got anything new for uh, Volt, actually, but I I can't remember. I think we didn't have Redirection before, so I got Vitality and Redirection now, which is a good start. We also have access to Steel Fiber. I'm going to go ahead and throw that on. Steel Fiber is the base armor mod, so Vitality, Redirection, and Steel Fiber are your base survivability mods that most players use. Uh, Steel Fiber is for armor, Vitality is health, and then Redirection is shield capacity. Once again, haven't raised any of these. Same reason, I want to be able to put these on a brand new frame when we do start to level brand new frames. Uh, we can go ahead and throw Stretch on here, or Enemy Sense. I think we'll actually throw Enemy Sense on here so that we get a little bit of enemy radar. That can be actually really useful in rescue missions and in spy missions. Speaking of which, I did a little bit of grinding of spy missions in Earth, so if we need a guide on that, or if you're having trouble with spy missions on Earth, let me know and I'll go through some of them so you guys can see some of the tricks to kind of get through those very quickly. Alright, so for the Mercury Junction here, we do need to rescue a hostage on Linnea, that is right here. We also need to complete 10 waves of defense at Tessera. So we're going to go to Tessera next, and we're going to do our 10 waves of defense here. Doesn't look like there's any open squads here, but I won't be sur surprised if somebody else does join us. 10 waves of defense really shouldn't be that bad, though. 
Uh, we did get a bunch of ranks. I don't know if you guys noticed that. So, like, Volt is, like, rank 14 now or something. So we have access to all four of our abilities, which is very useful. Uh, as well as ranking up our weapons a little bit, which I, you know, just kind of increases damage and things like that. So we should be pretty well off here to do this defense mission. Do we actually have any specters? We don't. Oh, and I told you I would show you guys how to put out your glyph prism so that you can get the night wave completion for that. So we'll do that as soon as we get up to the top of this elevator. Do to do. Come on. Reach the top. There we go. Okay, so if I hit Q and I go to my gear wheel here and I just click this, bam, glyph deployed. Uh, is that no longer a night wave? Did I miss that one? I did miss that one. They've rotated. Okay, so that's unfortunate. I did do a couple other night waves, which is why these are checked off. I did Rescuer, which is complete three rescue missions. And then we did Warning Shot, which was kill 200 enemies. We haven't quite gotten our first night wave level yet, but we should be looking at these to kind of keep in mind what we want to be doing. Uh, so it doesn't look like we're going to get much out of this particular mission. We can try to get magnetic and viral damage here soon, but those are hybrid damage types, so we'll need two mods to do it. Doesn't look like that's going to be something that we're going to accomplish right away. So our defense target looks to be right above us. We're going to fail to bullet jump up there, which will activate it. Good job, me. Okay. So here we go. Gonna open these up right away, see if maybe we get lucky, get a little bit of energy to help us out in the beginning. Doesn't look like that's the case, though. Bring it, enemies. So with defense missions, once again, your goal is just to protect the defense target and not be terrible at aiming with a bow like I am. Hello, friends. Let's just give them a little slashy slashy. Uh, you'll notice that sometimes the limbs come off of enemies when we're slashing them. That's actually a function of the, the slash damage type. Hey, and look at this. That person is geared out. They are here to help us. This is why we leave our, our queues open to the public when we're grinding up and stuff, because people who are much higher can come in and help. Let's take a look. Oh, no, this guy's only three, but he's in a revenant, though. So that's another thing to consider, is that MR is not necessarily indicative of somebody's capabilities within the game. Revenant is not a frame that I would say is super easy to get. I mean, perhaps they just bought Revenant from the store, but either way, there is a very good likelihood here that this player is bringing something to the table that you wouldn't necessarily expect from an MR3 player. And looking at their weapons, I'm actually kind of curious whether those are... Yeah, that is a Corinth Prime and a Pangolin Prime. So this player has grinded the newest Prime weapons. Uh, that means they're probably going to be pretty helpful on this. And you'll find this quite often. I've actually seen people in region chat saying looking for new players that are just trying to work their way through the star chart to help out. Uh, and that's one of the best things about the Warframe community is that there are people like that. Now, don't get me wrong. There are also people in the community that can be kind of uh, whiny or, or disgruntled. When you run into those people, just remember that it doesn't affect your gameplay at all. You can kind of just ignore them. Like, it's very hard for one player to get angry and spike a mission for the whole team. So we're just running around killing stuff here. We are keeping an eye on the health of the defense target, but it is basically capped out right now, so there's no need to worry. Hello there. Oh, those look to be under Revenant's control or something? I don't know what that... I've never actually used Revenant, so I'm not sure what those things above their heads are. Interesting. All right, you, you do your revenant-y revenant thing. So we're going to run around and just take these guys out. We are kind of focusing on using our melee here. That's because I feel like the Skana is going to be the first thing that we're going to max out as far as rank goes. Just because melee is sort of the go-to in a lot of missions. You can't run out of ammo with it. You don't require accuracy. As a new player, leaning on your melee weapon is absolutely acceptable. I even encourage it. As you can see, when we do our big slam attack, too, it does inherit whatever elemental properties we have on our weapon. So that's another nice reason to focus in on your melees. Uh, right now, we're just using cold damage on our melee weapon, so it's not really that effective. But if we were using magnetic, for example, it would just devour the shields of these corpus enemies. Uh, the corpus do have shields and armor, but the shields are kind of the bigger pain. So when you're going up against corpus enemies, it can help to bring cold and electricity, which together will form magnetic damage. We don't have the ability to do that quite yet, but we're looking to because that is one of our night waves. The other night wave we have is viral damage, which is cold and toxin damage together. 
Uh, those hybrid damage types are the ones you're typically going to aim for as you get further in the game. But right now, because we are a new player, we only have so many mods, we're just focusing on what we have access to. Alright, you're not very nice. Get off of our Warframe Cryopod, please. God, I love Slash procs, though. Slash procs are really, really strong, guys. They used to be even better, but they're still very, very strong. Uh, basically, the way Slash procs work is when they trigger, they put a damage over time on the enemy. That damage over time does have to eat through the shields, but once it gets through the shields, it goes directly to their health. Now, the reason that's efficient is because it means that if they have armor, it doesn't matter all that much. It'll still go straight to their health. Uh, plus, you get the cool decapitation animations. And with certain frames, you can do fun, fun things with that. Oh, wow. Revenant is doing a light show for us. Let's let's see. Do we have a... Oh, I was trying to applaud him or something, but I don't have an applause. So instead, we're just going to dance while he does his light show. Um, okay. Next round here. We need to make it 10 waves. We're at four right now. As you can see, though, this is pretty quick. Like, you're not going to spend a ton of time completing this to open that junction. Probably the most difficult part of opening the next junction will be the boss fight. Because there is a boss we have to defeat on Fossa. That really shouldn't be that bad, though. Especially not with Volt being where he's at right now. Like, we have the ability to drop our shields. We also have the ability to just straight up use our 4 now, which is very strong. Our 4 will actually allow us to just kind of destroy anybody around us. So there we go. Shock him up. Shoot him up. Headshots all around because people can't move when they're stunned by that shock. And there we go. As you can see, our 4 is great for taking out groups of enemies if we ever get overwhelmed or anything. That being said, we're not really getting overwhelmed here. We're just kind of pushing through these waves, and it's not really too much of a problem. Uh, it does help that we have this awesome Revenant with us, though. Oh boy. Don't like those drones. The heavy armor drones like that have a tendency to charge you and blow themselves up. They don't do a ton of damage, but it does deny you the opportunity to kill them for affinity. So that's sort of something to keep in mind. I mean, we could be using our bow here a little bit more if we really wanted to focus on it, but I'm not super inclined to do that. I think our Latos might actually be better right now because of the mods we have on them, but I can't say for sure. Or rather, our Lato, we do not have the AK Latos yet. Those are another weapon we'll probably be working on for secondary soon. Hello, friend. We do still have the AK Bronco waiting to be built. That's another secondary we want to work up. Basically, early game, you're going to be working through secondaries that you can either turn into other secondaries very quickly or that you can just flat out sell. And the main reason for that is we're just trying to get our affinity up, and that's because Mastery Rank early on unlocks new game features. Uh, the next game feature we'll be talking about that is unlocked by Mastery Rank is Syndicates, but we're not quite there yet. I do have a very, very cool thing to share with you guys on Syndicates, though. Most new players seem to come of the opinion that you can have two Syndicates because the system does look designed for you to only have two allied Syndicates. But there is a way to work the reputation system with the Syndicates so that you can actually have access to four different Syndicates. So we'll be talking about that. We'll also be talking about which of the Syndicates is going to be most important to you as a new player. Uh, and that'll be the one leading into the Heck, which is a shotgun that you may have heard players talk about. It's a very, very strong weapon early game because there is a mod that makes it so that every time you fire it, you basically fire twice, with the second shot being free ammunition uh, on ammunition. Sorry about that, guys. So, yeah. Heck's going to be very powerful. The Syndicates are going to be fun to talk about. Uh, getting to have four of them is something that I did not even fully understand until very recently, so I'm glad that I, I did a little research for the guide before I shared anything. Uh, it is extremely, extremely nice to be able to get all of, well, not all of them, but the majority of the syndicates because they do have some unique, cool stuff to them, like some cosmetic things, as well as just some really cool weapon mods that do special things for specific weapons. We're gonna stay. Hey, thank you, Vasquez. You're awesome. Hey, buddy. Oh, I didn't see him talking. <laughs> hey there. Sorry about that. Recording a beginner's guide. Thanks for the help. <laughs> uh, very, very cool of him to come on in here with his Revenant and his Prime weapons and do the good things for us. I st I'm now curious about Revenant because I don't know what those things over their heads do, but I'm presuming he gains something from those enemies dying. Uh, so very, very cool. That's the 
fun thing about Warframe is that there's so many frames, it's hard to actually know them all, and that's kind of okay. Like, the idea is that they all specialize in different things. So by unlocking new Warframes, you can kind of unlock new gameplay loops, and that keeps the game very, very interesting and dynamic. Uh, I recently, on my main account, acquired a new frame called Vauban, and like, at first I was like, I don't get it, this frame doesn't seem very, very strong, I don't know what I'm doing with it. And then, like, towards the end of ranking it up, I was like, oh man, I, I really like this frame now. Like, I kind of want to put some more time in on it, because I really do enjoy the way that it plays. Uh, so that's the, the beauty of Warframe, is that there's a lot of different playstyles available in the game. And while people can tell you which frames are best for certain tasks, the real answer is that the best frame is the one that you enjoy playing in those tasks. So, I was just making sure I didn't miss a, a message from our Revenant friend. Uh, he is <laughs> making this much easier on us. I mean, we'd still be able to do this just fine on our own, but once again, do not be afraid to take advantage of the... Well, not take advantage, to appreciate the kindness of strangers in Warframe. Uh, don't take advantage, don't leech, don't like jump into a mission and just sit back and do nothing. But absolutely feel fine in jumping into a mission, maybe with one weapon that's under-leveled and trying to get some extra affinity on that. Because one of the fastest ways you can raise up a weapon as a new player is to bring like a rank zero weapon into a slightly higher mission. And just don't rely on it too much. Because you'll still get a bunch of affinity on it, but you can use your higher level weapons in that mission. Uh, that's my general rule of thumb with that, is you always bring kind of one weapon that's on par with the mission level. And the rest you can bring kind of lower weapons. As long as you feel that you can contribute to the mission in some way, it's probably okay. Especially if your frame happens to be capped out, and I think you'll run into that more often than not. Uh, it's a lot harder to put together a full frame frequently than it is to put together new weapons frequently, so you'll be doing a lot of affinity grinding on your weapons while using frames that have already been kind of leveled up. So for that reason, if you're bringing like a max level frame and you've got strong abilities and you know how to use them, probably okay to bring some under leveled weapons. But there is, there's like an anti-leeching rule in the game, so don't just join a mission and stand off on the side and do nothing. Uh, and I, I use that term loosely because there are certain frames where you can join a mission, stand off on the side, and do a lot. <laughs> there are frames where you can kind of drop your abilities, set it and forget it, and just kind of watch things unfold, or you can join the fray and fight a whole bunch. Really does just depend on your frame. Uh, and there are frames that I've had on missions with me where I'm like, if you just drop your abilities, I don't care what you do, buddy. You you do you. Uh, Wisp is a great example of that, although I, I do find most Wisp players are actively engaged in the, the mission. They have amazing buffs, and if they come to a mission with me and they drop those, I'm happy right there. Uh, Wisp is great. Has an attack speed buff. Has, I believe, an energy restore buff. I haven't actually played Wisp, but it is on my list of frames to get because of the, the attack speed buff being so useful for ranking up weapons. Uh, it's insane. It's insane to start a new weapon and be like, yeah, this weapon's okay, and then Wisp drops an attack speed buff and you're like, this weapon is awesome. Because the reality is every weapon is awesome when they have a ridiculous fire rate. Okay, so our Revenant buddy has that side. We have this side almost getting done with this. We've got maybe one more wave after this, two more waves after this. I always forget whether the wave counter is counting the current wave or the waves that you've completed. Uh, it might be waves completed, so we've probably got two left here. But the reality is, like, this isn't, you know, super hard. We're, we're just kind of having fun ranking up our Skana here. We can check the rank on it right now. It's up to 17. Pretty nice. Uh, if we can get that up to 30, it means we can move on to a new melee weapon. And the next melee weapon we're going to be ranking up is probably going to be Fists. Which are just fun. Fist weapons are very fun. Uh, we should actually be able to show the combo counter off in this mission a little bit easier than we were able to last episode. Where I didn't really get the chance to hit enough enemies to bring the combo counter up. But we'll try to find a group of enemies and then take care of it. A bow to our Revenant friend here because he's awesome. Him standing still like that means he's probably typing to us right now. Okay, so, as you can see in the bottom right corner, count is up to 21, and there we go. Now it says two times. That two times means that if we do a heavy attack here, we're going to get two times damage, I believe. Uh, so the way that that works is you want to stack that up by using fast attacks and then consume it with your heavy attack. The other thing you can do with that is there are certain mods in the game that 
basically increase stats based on your combo counter. Now you'll notice that our combo counter is taking until 21 to go up on here. I assume that that is without mods and things because on my main account I get about 12 hits and I go up to the next combo counter. Uh, so that is something to consider. It doesn't necessarily take that long. It's just that we're kind of starting out fresh. We don't really have a efficient combo counter built out right now. There is actually a combo efficiency stat, which I believe is the one that's responsible for lowering the amount of that number, or the amount of hits that are required to raise the combo counter up. Oh, okay. Figured he was typing to us because he just stopped there, but he did not say anything, so we're just going to keep on going. We will make sure to thank him by the end of this, though, because it is very nice to have somebody help you along. Like I said, I don't think we needed it. We probably would have been fine. Like, we haven't even been in danger. It's not like he's really carrying us. But having a second person here does mean that we get more kills, we get more affinity, because more enemies spawn if you have more people. Uh, so it is beneficial to us as far as progression to have somebody come help us out. And if there was ever any doubt we were going to complete this, having somebody in here with a bunch of prime weapons and a revenant means that we we were never in any danger whatsoever. Still don't think we would have needed the help specifically, but it is nice to have people hang out with you. Plus, he was just nice. Like, normally you do missions and people don't necessarily even talk to you because, like, you guys are there for a reason. You got a mission to do, you get the job done, and you go. So him being nice and saying hello, uh, very, very cool. It's honestly nice to see, especially while I'm recording this, because there are quite a few friendly people in the community. I've done missions with people before where I've talked about, like, what I'm currently working towards in the game, and they've been like, oh, have you tried this? Uh, like, most recently, I, on my main account, I was doing a mission with somebody on Plains of Eidolon, which is something we haven't covered yet, but we will be covering in a bit. We basically need to do something else before we do that. Uh, and I have reasons for that, which I'll explain when we get there. But regardless, I was doing some missions there with a random player and just talking to him. And I was mentioning that on my main account, you know, I was kind of running short on plat and I needed to, to find a way to get some so that I could uh, basically unlock a new Warframe slot for a new frame that I had been building. And he gave me some advice and I was able to use that advice to turn around and make like 150 plat in a day. Very, very useful. Very cool guy, added him to my friends list. So you will find people on here that just are very nice, kind, and helpful. And that is definitely one of the nicer, nicer things about the Warframe community. Now do remember though, that for like every 20 people you find that are super cool, you will find one that gets salty or, or rages a little bit. And that's okay, you know, everybody has bad days. Doesn't mean that you have to dislike them. Doesn't mean you have to block them. You can honestly just ignore them. Now, if anyone's kind of harassing you or, or otherwise being a jerk, then definitely ignore them and just move on with your life. But in general, if people have a bad day, they might gripe a little bit in chat, but they'll probably just chill when you're done. Or they'll go and you'll never see them again, so it's kind of not that big of a deal. Alrighty, looks like we hit wave 10. And we're out. So now we get magazine warp. Thank you for the help. Gonna send him a little smiley emoji because he was friendly and we appreciate that. And away we go. Okay, so that is one of our junction missions completed. Uh, we don't need to kick him out of the group. Like, we can just wait. He may not come with us, but we can try. I'm gonna go to Linnea. We'll see if he wants to come with us on this. This is a rescue mission. He may just bounce off, do his own thing. That's fine either way. You'll note that when you do queue up with another player in your group, it leaves you in this position where you're waiting for them to confirm. So we can either wait for him to confirm or we can click this play button right here to say, hey, we're going into this mission. Generally, it's considered impolite to, to do that, especially with randoms. Um, and that's just because like, if we do that and he doesn't want to come on this mission, after 10 seconds, it will drag him into this mission. Oh, cool. So he's decided to come with us. That's awesome. Uh, so that should make getting through Linnea very, very quick here. And then we just have to work our way to Fossa. Oh, I like his orbiter. So you can see you can get different orbiter designs and different orbiter types. Gotta fly around on the loading screen because that's the funnest part of the game, really. No, I'm just kidding. That is a very fun part of the game, though. Uh, I, I've got a friend who's been playing this with me now for about a month and like he still gets a kick out of every time we load into a mission with four people and they're all just bouncing around in their friend. Ooh, Hildren. That's Hildren, right? That's Big Beefy. Big Beefy. 
Okay, so Hildren is an interesting frame that provides additional shielding to allies. Uh, so for this, we're just trying to locate our hostage. I'm gonna go ahead and give him a speed boost. Help out our friends here on Volting. Oh, oh no. Didn't quite make that one. Just, just slightly didn't quite make that one. There we go. Across the, the pit we go, and then up and away. Gonna speed boost here again. Cut these guys down. Uh, I am kind of breaking containers as we go, and that is because we're gonna need some materials as we move forward for sure. I have been trying to do a lot of the material farming off screen, but there are some, some great things that you can find on the ground uh, if you pay close enough attention. Attention, attention. So breaking things like this isn't a bad idea. There are things like Ayatin stars, which maybe we'll find one here that we can use to get more endo. Uh, and there are also, on occasion, some things called Ayatin sculptures that will spawn on the ground. And those can be used to get yourself some more endo as well. Endo, a very important resource for upgrading your mods. Oh, we're at the buddy door, so now we gotta wait for him to catch up. Which is fine. We'll go run around, see if we can find any more things to break and take. It doesn't look like that's going to be a thing right now. Uh, I assume that he's down there breaking all of the things to try to see if he can find some resources. Which is actually very helpful, because if they find valuable resources like Endo or something, they can tag them so that we know to come get them. And if they find certain resources, the game will auto-tag them so that we know to come get them. Okay, here's our friend. We're going to hop onto the elevator with them. There we go. That's another thing. Be polite, guys. Be polite. If you are jumping onto an elevator and you're waiting for someone, don't hit the switch right before they get there. I see people do that all the time, and it's like, really? Come on, man. What are you, what are you doing? That's not cool. That's not cool. All right, buddy door open. Oh, I was trying to get a stealth kill there. Stealth kills do award more affinity, so they're definitely nice to have. Uh, you also get better affinity when you're on a mission with somebody else because there's a shared affinity bonus. So that's another helpful part of having this person with us. Uh, which also means that if you have friends, you should definitely invite them to join Warframe with you so that they can, you know, play along as well and you guys can both get more affinity. Speaking of which, if you are not a Warframe player and you would like to try the game out, there is a link in the chat to my referral link. Now that doesn't do anything crazy. What it does do is it gives you a little bit of an affinity boost for your first seven days. And at the same time, it makes it so that if you do decide to buy a little bit of plat, uh, DE will break off a, a small portion of that for me to help fuel my gameplay as well. They don't take that from you, but they, they essentially just give me a little bit of extra plat on the side. So you don't have to worry that, like, I'm, I'm getting your plat. It's not like that. It's just that because you bought plat, DE is like, hey, you, you recommended this person to play our game, so here, have a plat. And, I mean, it, it's really not much. It's like that. It's like, have a plat, but uh, every little bit counts. Ooh, Ayatin Star. Okay, so this is an important thing for us to look at. This is an Ayatin Cyan Star. So we're gonna grab that. You do have to press X to pick those up and they do get marked on the map as soon as you find them. Um, and I think we got off track because our ally is moving the correct direction and I am not. Uh, anyways, so Ayatin Stars are great because you can use them to get more endo. We'll show, I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. There is a particular mission that you can do every week that involves them. That's when I'll probably get around to explaining that. Ooh, North Wind. Hello, friend. Uh, so that's a nice mod for us to pick up. I believe we already had that one because that's what's on our sword right now. But still, anytime you get a damage mod, it's kind of nice. Uh, and our ally is waiting for us at a buddy door, so we're going to catch up to them real quick. There's some endo on the ground there. All right, through the next door we go. Dun dun dun. Hello. Goodbye. Uh, so it looks like the targets we're trying to rescue are up here. We're gonna look for a way in that is indirect, because generally those ways are a little bit safer. So we're gonna come down through here, pop up, and here's the door to hack. Okay, so let's loop through these. Sorry, I got distracted by my cat. There is not an ally in there for us to rescue, which means they have to be at this door. Alright, there we go. And they're on their way out. So now we'll go through the main door to leave. We just didn't want to go through the main door at, uh, at first because usually there's a camera up there that'll catch you and then you have to rescue the hostage quickly or there's a chance that they will kill the hostage and you will fail the mission. So rather than take that risk, we went in the sneaky way. 
Now, that being said, if you prefer to go in loud, you're always welcome to go in loud. When I first played the game, I went in loud all the time. It's only now that I've played for a while that I kind of look for those quieter ways in because they generally just make things run a little bit smoother. Oh, and there is an alarm going. It's important to note that when you do these rescue missions, the hostages are pretty capable of taking care of themselves. So as long as you don't linger too long in one area so that they can be beaten down by enemies, they will kind of teleport to keep up with you. So you can speed your way through and they should stay with you relatively well without getting hurt. Now, if you do slow down and decide to fight stuff, do not be surprised if your hostage begins to take damage and potentially dies. Uh, we do not want that to happen in this instance, so we're going to kind of just keep moving forward. Uh, every tile set is kind of reused in different formations as you're going as well, so try to memorize the exits and things. So, like, we've seen this exit before, I believe, or at least I've seen it like a thousand times, so we know we can jump over that hill back there and then come straight to the exit. There we go. Linnea is done. Oh, we got Phase Spectre Blueprints. We may actually build some of those, but I think we just get given Spectres at one point. So we'll probably wait until then. Spectres are essentially units that you can put on your gear wheel and apply to help you in missions. So if you're having trouble in a defense mission or survival mission, drop a Spectre. They can help you out. They're basically NPC allies. Uh, I do have a mail that keeps popping up about that mail is from me watching a stream. It's a, a stream bonus, essentially. Okay, that's it. Vasquez is done. He he helped us out with Linnea. Very kind of him. Time for us to move forward. So now if we check the Mercury Junction, we have everything done except for defeating the Jackal at Fossa. In order to get to Fossa, we need to finish the missions up to there. So we could do Killikin, Aphrodite, and Fossa, but since I've already done Venara here, or Venera, We've been able to go straight to Aphrodite, so we'll do that. This is a mobile defense mission, which means that we're going to be picking up an object, putting it into a hacking terminal, protecting that terminal, rinse and repeat three times, that'll get us through the mission, and then we can go to Fossa for our first real assassination mission, which will be the Jackal. Uh, that should be very, very interesting. What is he doing? What in the world does he have? Orion, what are you doing? Stop. He's like shoving something around on the floor and it's loud. I have no idea what he has. Alright, well, I'll deal with that later. Gonna focus on our mission here. Do to do. We're gonna jump through here. Is he oh my gosh, it's so sorry guys, if that's coming through in the audio, I do apologize. The cat has decided that now is the time to be loud and obnoxious. All right, let's turn on our sprint here, or rather our, our speed boost, and head straight for the objective. We're going to drop this defense thing in. And go ahead and grab some energy and then just, you know, hold the enemies off of here. Shouldn't be tough. We only have to do it for about a minute. Uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem at all. We're just going to kind of grind people down with our sword. Once again, focusing on maxing out the rank on that. Oh, nice. We got a shotgun mod that adds cold damage. We're not really using a shotgun quite yet, but very, very soon we will be using a shotgun. An extremely powerful one, mind you. Oh my gosh, this cat is driving me crazy, y'all. Trying to figure out what he's got over there that he's pushing around because it's loud and I have no idea what it is. All right, down here we go. Slashy, slashy. So far, the health on the terminal is just fine. Should be done with this in very, very short time, and then we can move on to the next objective. We do want to stay close, though, because we have to pick up that object to carry to the next terminal after each terminal is completed. Okay, grab the object, hit our speed boost, time to go. Goodbye, friends. I'd say it was nice knowing you, but it really wasn't. I'm just trying to get through this. Okay. Leave our corpus friends behind here. Oof, somebody blew up a container next to us. That wasn't fun. Okay, I was for a minute there, I was like, I didn't see it when I was bullet jumping, and I was like, did we leave it behind? I've done that before. Don't do that. Don't forget the uh, mobile defense target thing. You gotta bring that to the next terminal, otherwise you will end up running all the way back to the previous terminal. Ooh, nice. 100 affinity, or affinity in that locker right there. That'll give us a little boost. I'm just gonna shred these guys in order to keep them off of the point. Excuse me, sir. Can you not hit that terminal, please? Uh, you see this drone right here? He's a shield osprey. 
He has lines coming off of him because he is providing shields to other allies. Alright, you're going down too. Dun dun dun. I think the cat actually shoved whatever it was he was playing with under the couch, so now he can't get it. Peace, folks. This is how we get peace. We just let him shove it that far. Headshot there. Ooh, that was nasty. That was nasty. That was his actual skull. Oh, we got a shield osprey over here causing problems. If you're having trouble killing the shield ospreys, use the jumping slam attack I told you guys about in the first episode. That will stun them so that you can beat them down very easily. Uh, that's with basically any flying drone you can do that. So definitely take advantage of that if you're struggling to kill the flying drones, because they can kind of bounce around a little bit. And if you're using the bow like I am, it can be hard to actually hit them. I'm also very inaccurate, so that, that's part of it too, but we're just going to blame it on the bow entirely. What are you doing, cat? He's so crazy. He's just hyped this morning. I don't know what his deal is. Okay, last terminal here. Whoop. Rolling back and forth. See if we can get some items out of these containers. Could be something useful. Not really, just some credits. That's okay. Credits are good. At some point, we switched over to our pistol. Not sure when that was, but all right. And we have an Osprey problem. Gonna slash that thing up and take it down. Ooh, one of the enemies tried to pop us up there in the air themselves so that we couldn't fight. We don't like that. We're gonna take that guy out and then go back to work on the rest of his friends. 33 seconds left. This should be relatively quick. Don't foresee any complications here. On occasion, on occasion in some of these missions, Lotus will radio through and be like, yeah, this is going to take a little bit longer. Uh, but I don't think they do that on these sort of early planets because that would just be kind of pointless. All right. You're going... Well, you would be going down, but that shield Osprey is a... Come here. Get shocked. If you're Volt, fun trick... Your shock basically annihilates Ospreys, so just use that. Just use that. That is just as effective as ground slamming here. Uh, the Paris is up to rank 18. That is with us losing all of the affinity from this mission, so it may actually be higher. Nope, it's 18. So because we triggered that camera, those laser walls right there went up, and the laser walls do a lot of damage. So if you trigger a camera, you hear that little noise and see the red light. Watch out for laser walls. They will knock you down. They will do an, a large amount of damage. Usually they'll take out your entire shield and knock you down, which is actually a way you can get killed pretty easily as a new player without a ton of mods. So just kind of be mindful of that. And here we go. We've seen this exit before, haven't we? We've seen this tile set. We know how this exit works. We just need to come out here and then run down to the platform and we're out. All right. On to Fossa. So we're at about 40 minutes right here. I was trying to keep these to about 30 minutes apiece, but I think we're just going to push through Fossa and then go and do our junction and finish out this episode with that. If you guys do have questions, comments, feedback, ideas, things that I'm not covering that you think should be covered for new players, do feel free to leave those down in the comments so that I can address them in the next installment of the new players or the beginner's guide to the galaxy. So I, I mold over different titles for the series and, and yeah, sometimes I mix them up. Anyways, we're gonna hop into Fossa here. We're gonna be fighting the Jackal. This should be a very interesting boss fight considering our loadout. Uh, not super happy about having bow for this, but it should be fine. We'll make it work, guys, we'll make it work. Oh, and it looks like we have somebody coming with us. Ivan Ooze. Really? <laughs> Can you guys hear him? <laughs> oh my gosh. What is he doing? I, I don't know if he's at the window yelling at a squirrel or if he got himself stuck on a curtain. I'm reasonably sure that he got himself stuck on a curtain the way that he's crying though. Oh no, I think he just made our other kitty angry. Here she comes. Yeah, he just made our other kitty angry. Hey. Stop it. God. The cats just need to fight because we're doing this right now. Uh, okay. Gonna keep moving forward here. We don't need to fight any of this stuff on our way to the... How did I get... Oh, that's why. Ha! Up here. Uh, we do not need to fight anything on our way to the jackal. We can just kind of go straight through. And once we get to the Jackal, we'll 
basically fight it with Ivan Ooze, our new friend. He is using an Excal that does actually make this fight a little bit easier, I feel. But honestly, I'm not sure we'd have much trouble with it anyway as Volt because there are some tricks that we have up our sleeve that Excal does not have access to. Uh, things like our ability to shock stun things. Oh, here we go. Somebody else is joining in as well. That should make this boss fight particularly easy. And this is another reason why you don't really need to pick Excal as your starting frame. Because you're going to have other people with you. Uh, this is the Jackal right here. When he gets activated, we will fight him. Basically, what you want to do is you want to destroy his legs. So we're just going to focus in on his legs. We're going to take them out one at a time. He does have a knockdown here that's a problem. And then once he gets up... We can go after his other leg. The goal here is to destroy all four of his legs. All right, he's done. Simple and finished. And we got a tactical reload mod. We also got the jackal sigil there. You can see that in the corner. A sigil is something that we can put onto our appearance to kind of make us look cooler. That's really all it does. Nine times out of ten, the sigil you'll be using will be related to a syndicate. Because in that case, not only will you look cooler, you'll actually gain reputation with the syndicate for wearing it. Uh, the jackal sigil is just for decoration, though. Fashion frame is a thing. Is that a Vectus Prime on that Excal? That Excal has a Vectus Prime. So that Excal is more than likely somebody that has Twitch Prime. If you do have Twitch Prime, you'll get some free stuff with that. One of the things you'll typically get is a Trinity Prime with Excalibur Prime. At least I was able to get that on my main account. I don't know if that's still something they're giving out. And you see we got a Rhino Chassis Blueprint here. So if we want to get another frame, and Rhino is probably the second frame we'll get, this is how you do it. You fight bosses to get different chassis, well, not different chassis pieces, but different frame pieces. We got the Rhino Chassis here. In order to build Rhino, we would need to... Nope, we're not going to repeat that. Sorry, bud. I get that you're grinding for Rhino. Uh, and if we wanted to get Rhino, we would repeat that, but we want to go do our junction now because we should be ready. Yes, we are. It's unlocked. Here we go, folks. We're going to knock out our Mercury Junction. And then between this episode and the next episode, I probably will grind the Jackal in Fossa so that I can get the parts that we need to build Rhino. And I'll show you guys how building a frame works on the next episode. Alrighty. This should be a very interesting fight. I believe that we might... We already fought Rhino. So is this going to be... I want to say this is Ember. But I can't say for sure. Alright. We open the door. And who are you? Oh, this is Volt. Hey, fellow Volt. Oh, he's a smarter Volt, though. He dropped his shield. So he's going to get increased damage through that shield. And we know that, so we're going to try to kind of avoid it. Nothing we can do but wait for it to go down. All right, let's go, buddy. You put your shield up all you want. I'm going to slash you. <laughs> so we're just going to rage slash him there to get through it pretty quickly. Uh, he wants to play defensively and hide behind a shield. We'll just do that. Okay, junction is complete. We now have access to Mercury. And that is... Well, let's see what else we get. We'll probably get a couple other things here. Maybe some mods, some other things. I didn't look at all the, the rewards for this before we went in. And there could be some pretty interesting potential rewards. Uh, I do apologize once again for my cats being a bit of a disruption on this Beginner's Guide episode. Uh, so we got a flawed streamline, which is interesting. Would have been nicer to get a non-flawed Streamline. Streamline is one of those sort of base mods that you're going to use on every single frame. Uh, so we got access to a quest called Once Awake. We got access to a quest called Howl of the Cubro. And we got a Bolter Blueprint. So the Bolter is a rifle that we'll probably be building at some point because we can build it into another weapon. Interestingly enough, it actually builds into a melee, excuse me, a melee weapon instead of a, another assault rifle. So that's something intriguing about that and we also hit our mastery rank up here so maybe we'll do that real quick as well the second mastery rank shouldn't be hard okay so it's telling us that we now have access to mercury and we're gonna go ahead and hit our mastery rank up real quick this is our silver test this will give us trading access and a couple other things uh it's honestly not gonna be that hard i believe this is a secondary test yeah prove your ability with a sidearm so this is going to be kill a certain number of enemies in a time limit with a sidearm. Now, this is going to be pretty simple because we have the Lado. If we had chosen the Kunais, this wouldn't be as easy. You'll note once again, though, that we do not have access to our abilities here. We simply have to kill these enemies in the time period with our pistol. Alright, 
next round. I think it's something like three rounds to, to get completion of this. And the main thing we need is just to identify where the enemies are. It's not like it's hard for us to take them down. Alright, another enemy there. So it really just comes down to that. How quickly can you locate the enemies before the time limit runs up? Because the weapon is not a problem. Uh, and we can take them down faster if we get headshots, but we don't even really need that. We just need to find them. And as you can see, if we can put the enemies sort of grouped up between us, then we can just take them out one after the other. Wave 3 is complete, and I assume that's it. Yeah. Alright. Mastery rank 2 completed. That means we are just one mastery rank away from Syndicate access, which will be a fun talking point. And we have a new loadout slot, which is something we'll talk about in the next episode, too. We're a silver initiate now. Additional loadout slot, trading access, daily standing limit increase, daily focus increase, base mod capacity increase, and extra void traces storage. Uh, so that's awesome. So we are, like I said, just one mastery rank away from syndicates. Uh, I honestly just hit MR13 on my main account, so I'm working on 14 now so that I can use a very specific weapon, the Graham Prime. That is going to be it for this one, folks. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. Bye!